Today is day four for the Come Follow Me study for this week, September 2nd through the 8th. Remember the Lord, Helaman 7 through 12. Thursday, September 4th, 2024, Helaman 11. Nephi persuades the Lord to replace the war with a famine. Many people perish. They repent, and Nephi opportunes the Lord for rain. Nephi and Lehi receive many revelations. The Gadianton robbers entrench themselves in the land. About 20 to 6 B.C. Nephi seals the heavens that there might be famine. Joseph Smith, Matthew 1. Behold, I speak for mine elect's sake, for nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. Doctrine and Covenants 43. How oft have I called upon you by the mouth of my servants, and by the ministering of angels, and by mine own voice, and by the voice of thunderings, and by the voice of lightnings, and by the voice of tempests, and by the voice of earthquakes and great hailstorms, and by the voice of famines and pestilences of every kind, and by the great sound of a trump, and by the voice of judgment, and by the voice of mercy all the day long, and by the voice of glory and honor and the riches of eternal life, and would have saved you with an everlasting salvation, but ye would not. Doctrine and Covenants 133. There are none to deliver you, for ye obeyed not my voice when I called to you out of the heavens. Ye believed not my servants, and when they were sent unto you, you received them not. Wherefore, they sealed up the testimony and bound up the law, and ye were delivered over unto darkness. Helaman 11, 1 through 5. Now it came to pass in the seventy and second year of the reign of the judges that the contentions did increase, and so much that there were wars throughout all the land among all the people of Nephi. And it was this secret band of robbers who did carry on this work of destruction and wickedness. And this war did last all that year, and in the seventy and third year it did also last. And it came to pass that in this year Nephi did cry unto the Lord, saying, O Lord, do not suffer that this people shall be destroyed by the sword. But, O Lord, rather let there be a famine in the land, to stir them up in remembrance of the Lord their God, and perhaps they will repent and turn unto thee. And so it was done according to the words of Nephi, and there was a great famine upon the land, among all the people of Nephi. And thus in the seventy and fourth year the famine did continue, and the work of destruction did cease by the sword, but became sore by famine. President Spencer W. Kimball explained that the Lord uses the weather sometimes to discipline his people for the violation of his laws. How did this principle come into focus in Nephi's day? Elder A. Theodore Tuttle taught, A prophet not only prophesies of things that will happen, a prophet, by the exercise of faith, causes things to happen. Helaman 11, 6-16 and this work of destruction did also continue in the seventy and fifth year. For the earth was smitten, that it was dry, and did not yield forth grain in the season of grain. And the whole earth was smitten, even among the Lamanites as well as among the Nephites, so that they were smitten, that they did perish by thousands in the more wicked parts of the land. The prophet Joseph Smith said, The destroying angel will exercise his tremendous mission upon the children of disobedience and destroy the workers of iniquity while the saints will be gathered out from among them and stand in holy places, ready to meet the bridegroom when he comes. Helaman 11, 7 through 16. And it came to pass that the people saw that they were about to perish by famine, and they began to remember the Lord their God, and they began to remember the words of Nephi. And the people began to plead with their chief judges and their leaders that they would say unto Nephi, Behold, we know that thou art a man of God, and therefore cry unto the Lord your God, that he turn away from us this famine, lest all the words which thou hast spoken concerning our destruction be fulfilled. And it came to pass that the judges did say unto Nephi according to the words which had been desired. And it came to pass that when Nephi saw that the people had repented and did humble themselves in sackcloth, he cried again unto the Lord, saying, O Lord, behold, this people repenteth, and they have swept away the band of Gadianton from amongst them, insomuch that they have become extinct and they have concealed their secret plans in the earth. Now, O Lord, because of this their humility, wilt thou turn away thine anger, and let thine anger be appeased in the destruction of those wicked men whom thou hast already destroyed. O Lord, wilt thou turn away thine anger, yea, thy fierce anger, and cause that this famine may cease in this land. O Lord, wilt thou hearken unto me, 
and cause that it may be done according to my words, and send forth rain upon the face of the earth, that she may bring forth her fruit and her grain in the season of grain. O Lord, thou didst hearken unto my words when I said, Let there be a famine, that the pestilence of the sword might cease. And I know that thou wilt, even at this time, hearken unto my words. For thou saidest that if this people repent, I will spare them. Yea, O Lord, and thou seest that they have repented, because of the famine and the pestilence and destruction which has come unto them. And now, O Lord, wilt thou turn away thine anger, and try again if they will serve thee. And if so, O Lord, thou canst bless them according to thy words which thou hast said. Nephi's prayer on behalf of his people illustrates the concern of a prophet for the people. As well as representing God to the people, at times prophets also seek to intervene on behalf of their people. When plagued by poisonous serpents, the children of Israel went to Moses and pled, Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. In the Americas, Nephi, the son of Lehi, wrote, I pray continually for my people by day, and mine eyes water my pillow by night because of them, and I cry unto my God in faith. Our current prophets continue to pray for us. In the general conference following the tragic terrorist events on September 11, 2021, President Gordon B. Hinckley prayed, O God, our eternal Father, whose children we are, we look to Thee in faith in this dark and solemn time. Please, dear Father, bless us with faith, bless us with love, bless us with charity in our hearts, bless us with a spirit of perseverance to root out the terrible evils that are in this world, give protection and guidance to those who are engaged actively in carrying forth the things of battle, bless them, preserve their lives, save them from harm and evil. Hear the prayers of their loved ones for their safety. O Father, look with mercy upon us, our own nation, and its friends in this time of need. Spare us and help us to walk with faith ever in thee and ever in thy beloved Son, on whose mercy we count and to whom we look as our Savior and our Lord. Bless the cause of peace and bring it quickly to us again. We humbly plead with thee, asking that thou wilt forgive our arrogance, pass by our sins, be kind and gracious to us, and cause our hearts to turn with love toward thee. We humbly pray in the name of him who loves us all, even the Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and our Savior. Amen. Helaman 11, 17-22 And it came to pass that in the seventy and sixth year the Lord did turn away his anger from the people, and cause that rain should fall upon the earth, insomuch that it did bring forth her fruit in the season of her fruit. And it came to pass that it did bring forth her fruit in the season of her grain. And behold, the people did rejoice and glorify God, and the whole face of the land was filled with rejoicing. And they did no more seek to destroy Nephi, but they did esteem him as a great prophet and a man of God, having great power and authority given unto him from God. And behold, Lehi, his brother, was not a wit behind him as to things pertaining to righteousness. And thus it did come to pass that the people of Nephi began to prosper again in the land, and began to build up their waste places, and began to multiply and spread, even until they did cover the whole face of the land, both by the northward and on the southward, from the sea west to the sea east. And it came to pass that the seventy and sixth year did end in peace, and the seventy and seventh year began in peace, and the church did spread throughout the face of all the land. And the more part of the people, both the Nephites and the Lamanites, did belong to the church, and they did have exceedingly great peace in the land. And thus ended the seventy and seventh year. And also they had peace in the seventy and eighth year, save it were for a few contentions concerning the points of doctrine, which had been laid down by the prophets. President Joseph F. Smith said, You find the spirit of contention only among apostates, and those who have denied the faith, those who have turned away from the truth and have become enemies to God and his work. There you will find the spirit of contention, the spirit of strife. There you will find them wanting to argue the question. <clears throat> and to dispute with you all the time. Their food, which is abominable in the sight of the Lord, we do not contend, we are not contentious. For if we were, we would grieve the Spirit of the Lord from us, just as apostates do, and have always done. Helaman 11.23 And in the seventy and ninth year there began to be much strife. But it came to pass that Nephi and Lehi and many of their brethren who knew concerning the true points of doctrine, having many revelations daily, therefore they did preach unto the people, insomuch that they did put an end to their strife in that same year. 
Elder Bruce and McConkie of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles indicated what comprised the true doctrine of Christ. The true doctrine of Christ is that all men must come unto him, gain faith, repent, be baptized, receive the Holy Ghost, and endure in faith to the end in order to gain salvation. President Boyd K. Packer, president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, made this statement regarding the power of true doctrine. True doctrine, understood, changes attitudes and behavior. The study of the doctrines of the gospel will improve behavior quicker than a study of behavior will improve behavior. That is why we stress so forcefully the study of the doctrines of the gospel. Elder Bruce McConkie said, Those who preach by the power of the Holy Ghost use the scriptures as their basic source of knowledge and doctrine. They begin with what the Lord has before revealed to other inspired men. But it is the practice of the Lord to give added knowledge to those upon whose hearts the true meanings and intents of the scriptures have been impressed. Many great doctrinal revelations come to those who preach from the scriptures. When they are in tune with the infinite, the Lord lets them know first the full and complete meaning of the scriptures they are expounding, and then he oft-times expands their views so that new truths flood in upon them, and they learn added things that those who do not follow such a course can never know. The prophet Joseph Smith said, If God gives you a manifestation, keep it to yourselves. President Snow recalled, The Spirit of the Lord rested mightily upon me. The eyes of my understanding were opened, and I saw as clear as the sun at noonday, with wonder and astonishment, the pathway of God and man. Feeling that he had received a sacred communication, that he should guard carefully, Lorenzo Snow did not teach the doctrine publicly until he knew that the prophet Joseph Smith had taught it. Once he knew the doctrine was public knowledge, he testified of it frequently. President Boyd K. Packer said, The very nature of the priesthood allows for a great variety in the gospel knowledge of members struggling to learn as they serve. A member at any given time may not understand one point of doctrine or another, may have a misconception or even believe something is true that in fact is false. There is not much danger in that. That is an inevitable part of learning the gospel. No member of the church should be embarrassed at the need to repent of a false notion he might have believed. Such ideas are corrected as one grows in light and knowledge. It is not the belief in a false notion that is the problem. It is the teaching of it to others. In the church, we have the agency to believe whatever we want to believe about whatever we want to believe, but we are not authorized to teach it to others as truth. If someone approaches you individually or invites you to very private meetings, claiming to have some special calling, whatever you do, follow Paul's counsel. From such, turn away. President Henry B. Eyring said, Because we need the Holy Ghost, we must be cautious and careful not to go beyond teaching true doctrine. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth. His confirmation is invited by our avoiding speculation or personal interpretation. That can be hard to do. You love the person you are trying to influence. He or she may have ignored the doctrine they have been taught. It is tempting to try something new or sensational. But we invite the Holy Ghost as our companion when we are careful to teach only true doctrine. President Harold B. Lee said, It never ceases to amaze me how gullible some of our church members are in broadcasting sensational stories or dreams or visions or purported patriarchal blessings or quotations or supposedly from some person's private diary. Addresses given are spurious, and yet the amazing thing is that we find that these spurious writings and some of these purported revelations, which we found upon investigation are absolutely false, are finding their way into our Relief Society meetings, into priesthood quorums, firesides, institutes, and seminaries. Brethren of the priesthood, you defenders of the faith, we would wish that you would plead with our saints to cease promoting the works of the devil. Spend your time promoting the works of the Lord, and don't allow these things to be found among those under your charge, for they are the works of Satan. And we are playing his game whenever we permit such things to be heralded about and repeated and passed about on every side. I read this letter from the First Presidency in 1913. It has been entitled, A Warning Voice. To the officers and members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, no person has the right to induce his fellow members of the Church to engage in speculations or take stock in ventures of any kind on the spurious claim 
of divine revelation or vision or dream, especially when it is in opposition to the voice of recognized authority, local or general. The Wickedness of Gadianton Revived Helaman 11, 24-26 And it came to pass that in the eightieth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, there were a certain number of the dissenters from the people of Nephi, who had some years before gone over unto the Lamanites, and taken upon themselves the name of Lamanites, and also a certain number who were real descendants of the Lamanites, being stirred up to anger by them or by those dissenters, therefore they commenced a war with their brethren. And they did commit murder and plunder, and then they would retreat back into the mountains and into the wilderness and secret places, hiding themselves that they could not be discovered, receiving daily an addition to their numbers, insomuch as there were dissenters that went forth unto them. And thus in time, yea, even in the space of not many years, they became an exceedingly great band of robbers, and they did search out all the secret plans of Gadianton, and thus they became robbers of Gadianton. What enables evil groups to flourish in a civilization? Why, when the robbers had been annihilated and their secrets buried in the earth, did the Gadianton work of robbery and murder revive once again? Helaman 11, 27-31 Now behold, these robbers did make great havoc, yea, even great destruction among the people of Nephi, and also among the people of the Lamanites. And it came to pass that it was expedient that there should be a stop put to this work of destruction. Therefore they sent an army of strong men into the wilderness and upon the mountains to search out this band of robbers and to destroy them. But behold, it came to pass that in that same year they were driven back even into their own lands, and thus ended the eightieth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And it came to pass in the commencement of the eighty and first year they did go forth again against this band of robbers, and did destroy many, and they were also visited with much destruction, and they were again obliged to return out of the wilderness and out of the mountains unto their own lands, because of the exceeding greatness of the numbers of those robbers who infested the mountains and the wilderness. What action do the Nephites then take to check the robbers in their evil work? Helaman 11, 32-37 and it came to pass that thus ended this year, and the robbers did still increase and wax strong, insomuch that they did defy the whole armies of the Nephites, and also of the Lamanites, and they did cause great fear to come unto the people upon all the face of the land. Yea, for they did visit many parts of the land, and did do great destructions unto them. Yea, did kill many, and did carry away others captive into the wilderness, yea, and more especially their women and their children. Now this great evil which came unto the people because of their iniquity did stir them up again in remembrance of the Lord their God. And thus ended the eighty and first year of the reign of the judges. And in the eighty and second year they began again to forget the Lord their God. And in the eighty and third year they began to wax strong in iniquity. And in the eighty and fourth year they did not mend their ways. And it came to pass, in the eighty and fifth year they did wax stronger and stronger in their pride and in their wickedness. And thus they were ripening again for destruction. Even so, the robbers still increased until they were sufficiently large to defy the whole armies of the Nephites and also the Lamanites. What does Mormon say about that? The prophet Joseph Smith taught that the devil always sets up his kingdom at the very same time in opposition to God. Whenever the Savior's church is established or strengthened, the adversary seeks to create resistance in one form or another to battle the progress made by the saints of God. We see an example of Satan's opposition emerge in Helaman 11. The Gadianton robbers have been swept off the land. The righteous Nephite and Lamanite members of the church had great peace. Only a few years passed, however, before Satan's influence on the people led them to return to iniquity and allowed the Gadianton robbers to regain their power and influence. Helaman 11:88, And thus ended the eighty and fifth year.